Hello everyone, Prince Dokuto here. Welcome to the Royal Courtroom. Today we are going on to a strategy to help the Union Army in their campaign in the American Civil War. We have been learning a lot about the American Civil War these past couple of weeks, so we've actually started to study and see which generals would best fit us. We have decided today that we are going to take the amazing General Grant. Although, we do know he is also a drunkard, and is quite often drunk. But either way, we are going to take him and we are going to help him forge the greatest army in all of the United States. So he can beat back these rebellious soldiers and show them that the United States stays strong and stays together. So we're going to make sure that we know what he is. We know Grant is a logistician. We know that he was an infantry officer during the Mexican-American War. We know that he stayed with the army, mostly with the militia though. And then we know which side he's fighting for. He's fighting for the Union. We're going to keep him, we're going to give him the rank of Brigadier General. And we can see that he is not very good at politics. Just what we need. Not very good at economy. Horrible. Not very good at medicine. Also horrible. He has a six in training. So we will be able to get lots of troops fast with him. He has a two in army organization. We'll help him with that. He is a one in logistics. Okay. And as for that, as for uh, reconnaissance, he's up. <clears throat> okay. And we're going to make sure that he is properly written in our historical records. So, Ulysses S. Grant. I still may be pronouncing that name wrong. Now, let's us begin. The first mission the Americans have us helping them out with is their main objective is to secure this small town in a railroad section. And it's railroad station. According to our scouts, the garrison should not exceed 3,000 soldiers. We must capture this town before rebel reinforcements arrive via railroad. It is advised to use our vanguard to clear the town's perimeter from skirmishers and other threats. The rest of our forces en route will arrive from the southwest and assault the town when all our forces are present. So we're first going to send this unit off over here, this unit off over here, and this unit off over here. And we'll keep our general up over here. He has a total of 1,000 or 1,129 soldiers. So we need to keep that in mind. We can also see the whole unit's morale and condition and also what our losses are. And we've made first contact. We're going to have this larger unit run around and see if we can't hit them from a flank. We're taking acceptable casualties right now.
and we're gonna have them fire. Wow, they got a larger number on us. That is the problem with large packs formations like that, is that they do not have any cover. Almost ready. And fire! So they actually can lose larger numbers than what it says because all it tells us is deaths and kills. So our kills may be low and our deaths may be high but we also may have a few wounded and a few um, MIA because you can't actually capture units in this game. We have Brines and Still up here, so let's see if we can't pull off a surprise attack. And we're going to try and make sure that we can cut them off. We have one of them on the route. Now we're going to send our general straight up through here. And now we have this unit completely surrounded. We're going to try to keep it that way just a little bit longer too. And we'll get that massive cavalry block right over there. And now we have one of them surrounded completely. Although it seems like they're trying to also run away. We're going to try to capture them. Or at least that's my goal is to capture them. But what happened is also good too. So now we have our forces moving in an orderly fashion. We have a supply wagon with all the good stuff over there. We want them in that cover because that's better for them. They may not think it, but having no cover is worse for them than having cover. And sometimes the illicit man does not know that.
So before we continue too much further into this game, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of history from my perspective. I am a historian. I have got to my degree in history. I'm not completely... I don't know everything there is to know about the wars that I study. And to be honest, it's pretty hard to find someone who does. I'm still pretty young, but I am also a reenactor, and I do focus a lot on the American Civil War. The second war I focus on is the is the Japanese uh, Sengoku era, or the Warring States period. So you may hear me refer to those often. That actually has the better area to set up on. So we are real quick going to set these guys up. Well, if they're just going to do that, we're going to set them up like this. Okay. And that should give us a small advantage right there. We are now going to capture this town completely. And we're going to try to force them out of here completely too. We're getting some pretty good kills on too. So we're going to run right here and force them into an infantry bout. Now we're going to pull that skirmisher unit off and just give them a little bit more time to do what they need to do. Our general we're going to bring over here and force into uh, working for our common men. I think these eyes are supposed to represent high ground. I'm not entirely sure about it, but it also does great for reconnaissance. Sadly, we can't get over here without crossing these bridges first, however. Now we're going to hold off. Uh, now we're going to go into the trees to protect just a little bit. The more they send these guys out, the more likely it is that I am going to cut them off completely from friendly reinforcements. So at least they have that right. You can reload a musket while moving. Despite what some people think, it's not you have to be completely focused on the musket. That would be the worst weapon ever if it was a complete, you have to focus on it and nothing but it. Although standing does help you reload a little bit faster. These guys are actually holding off quite well. So I want them to actually have a little bit more firing power.
we're going to try to take over here and see if what we can't see versus what we can. So the past couple of times I've actually tried going in through here because I thought this place had more cover. But it seems like the better option is to go around and immediately attack into their flank. So there's that guy. Doesn't really have much to it. Although there is that guy over there, so we're going to have him. For some reason, this one unit itself has earned the ire of both of these. Now because there is a supply depot right here, it actually covers this entire fortified area. And therefore, it won't be easy to make them run out of ammunition. You have to literally break their will first. We'll try and keep everyone supplied too so we don't have the other issue which is they fire so much that they just run out of ammunition ourselves. And our cover is doing quite well for us. So we're going to let this continue for just a bit longer. And we'll actually just continue it on high speed. Yeah. So the farther the target is, the typically harder it is to hit it. Which is why cannoneers are usually trained to hit it as close to the target as possible. And we're going to move this group right here. They have a possibility of getting flanked, but right now it's easier to just force them into a smaller engagement. So we're trying to break this one line because if we can clear it, what can happen is we can start sending troops over and we can send our horses to attack this cannon range. If we can take out the cannons, they're pretty much over with because we have cannons they don't. Cannons are what is known as a force multiplier and they make it seem like you have a larger force. They also can take out larger forces than you. Uh, Basically think of them as a as an airplane or a helicopter. They're force multipliers because they make a single one of it equals multiple enemies. Uh, Henry repeating rifle is also a great example of that for at least the Civil War. 
a single uh, Henry Rifleman can fire 15 rounds. While a single musketman can fire four rounds a minute, maybe. It's iffy. That number varies depending on a lot of values. So now we're going to have them... We'll have our cannons attack them from far range. We'll have the troops run across this bridge because it's better not to be caught. We'll have them charge straight into the cannons. Did we lose control of them? Not yet. That's excellent actually. We can deal with our cavalry getting flanked later, but we can't deal with cannons for long periods of time. All right, 74. And now we're going to have them pull back. They're taking two heavy losses for what it is. However, we are now also going to have Grant's hold up right there. And we're going to put an artillery battery right there on the line. If we can just get this infantry unit straight over there. I'm having my cannons bounce and what bounding means is that I want to have one hold and fire while the other one moves up and hopefully that I can continue that. And that's why I didn't send all my troops just straight across is because it's better to bounce than it is to, well, get caught dead in the middle of the river. And now while we have them running away with their cannons... So we're still running, our troops are still running it seems like, which is the sad part. Oof, that took off a lot. Hold. Charge. So we're going to have Grant and the supply train come over. We're now going to have our artillery focus on these larger groups down here.
Now we just have to hold it for 14. 14 seconds. 13. 12. It's not really a second. It's like more like 2 seconds, 3 seconds. But I can't complain too much. That's actually a pretty good mechanic of this game. So now they are trying to attack in probably one of the worst ways you can possibly attack, which is sending units that are three times less than what my units are into the charge. Four. And we can actually send troops across this bridge now too to engage in another flanking maneuver. So we've captured the town. Grant is doing an amazing job. The town is now secure, but the rebels are determined to retake it. We have to be prepared. Some entrenchments. We have prepared in some some entrenchments to stop their assault. It's more like the rebels, but whatever. Multiple enemy re regiments are to approach from these roads. And the most serious threat is an armored train coming down the rails without cannon. We will have great difficulty neutralizing it. I still don't get what that means. Are they saying that we that it doesn't have cannons or that if we don't have cannons it will be great difficulty? Either way, it's interesting. Good news is that we've got reinforcements en route and which will include strong artillery to batteries which should arrive in about an hour. It's going to be a hard fight, General. Get ready to receive the, your order. So our skirmishers, we're going to move off to other places real quick. Our artillery batteries, okay. We want to center our cavalry. So once we see what's going on. After that we're going to send detachments out. To see if we can't spot the rebels and slow them down in their advance. can't do that for these guys because these guys are skirmishers themselves. Is that the lieutenant colonel's sign? I think it may be. You know what? We'll also send these guys to help better secure those areas. Oh, one already got engaged, so let's start moving forces that way. We'll have that one just restock. So we routed that one. Ooh, we have their general right there. More rebels are sighted. Yeah. We're going to hope for the best. Confederates coming down the, the northern roads. 
sometimes that's just funny to me. The people from the south are coming from the north. I don't think this is actually based on any real campaign, but it's still fun to take about. It's kind of a what if scenario. Oh, reinforcements have arrived. And it's three infantry, another supply wagon, and two. Looks like two more cannons, but no cavalry. Oh, they captured the detachment. Oh, well, that's okay. Walton's skirmishers were surrounded. And they surrendered. Start attacking these larger groups. We can manipulate skirmishers to attack from different angles, too. If only the reinforcements would actually make it in time. Let's see. There's another unit that's broken. Oh, so it does have cannons on it. Good to know. Very good to know, actually. MacArthur's trying to fight that way. I'm trying not to expose the center flank, but it may be of crucial importance that we actually do. Mostly because of how these units are fighting. So we can route them, which is good. They'll keep fighting on that. So Grant, you need to go over there. The supply wagon needs to go over there. Horse soldiers, you need to charge. So it's attacking the train at least.
Yeah. So this needs to go over here. And then this unit needs to go over here. As for our skirmishing regiments, they are pretty much gone. But we are able to push back, which is great for us. Both of these cannons need to be moved up over here. As long as we have this particular one going down, it's going to be okay. That unit got flanked, so that's going to be gone. off pretty well. Where's our cavalry? We're going to pull it in behind the train and see if we can't at least slow it down on its retreat. We're routing them more. Yeah, hold your line. So there's a train is completely missing the point and is leaving, I guess. Well, at least we drove the train off. Can't say I'm happy, not happy about that, at least. Now we're going to do a legit charge into the cannons and see if we can't destroy them that way. He's routed one group. And 
And we've routed one of them. Oh, and there's another Grant over there. Hey, Grant. We're not allowing you guys to escape. But we're also not allowing ourselves to be wasted unnecessarily. We did not capture any of their units, sadly. Let's see if we can't also flank out their uh, their main unit, their general. And sorry about my neighbor's dog barking. I don't like that that unit's like right behind them firing so much, but sometimes you have to do what you gotta do. Now let's see. We have 50 lo fifty percent losses. And we actually have more troops that survived than not. I'm going to try to use this to start flanking them. But we're going to see if we cannot capture the last little bit. going for another attack we're going to aim for the big one see if we can't disassemble that one We took out their general. And we can't capture anything, so we'll end it right there. Now we get to see the best part. What happened during the battle. And first... General Grant over here versus Ennis MacArthur and General Grant came in with 4,000 infantry, 224 cavalry, and 20 guns with 462 men on them. General MacArthur came in with 6,429 infantry, 205 cavalry, 8 guns, and 192 men on those guns. As for the casualties, the infantry lost 
uh, for General Grant, he had 1,572 casualties, three guns, I'm guessing destroyed, not captured, or captured, and 114 uh, men lost on that. He had 128 cavalry killed, zero missing, which means none of our guys were truly captured. Uh, 300 as for MacArthur 324 infantry lost five guns probably some captured 143 men were lost on those guns and 66 cavalry were lost well, they actually lost quite a little bit of they lost a little bit of cavalry which I'm actually not too happy about so kills versus death. This one is about even. I will deal with that. Walton took heavy losses and was able to get as many in return. Uh, so we're going to look at only Union Rope right now. And let's see. Stockton took heavy losses too. And that's pretty much it. Walton and Stockton took probably the heaviest losses versus it. As for the Confederates, they took extreme losses. Bryant and Harland almost never came out of their position, it seems like. They took almost no losses. That's actually pretty cool. So, Gene Zook it got promoted from Major to Lieutenant Colonel or Light Colonel. We didn't lose any officers, which is good. And the goods. Now, this is what's really great. We have rescued 775 Springfield 1842. We also captured 545 of those. As for the 1855 model, we captured 65. We got two six pound field artilleries rescued and captured. And 207 Sharps model 1855, two, uh, 207 rescued, 129 captured. That's actually all pretty good. So overall, we did very good in this battle. We took minimal losses and gave the enemy very high losses. Although I don't like that our general was supporting 50% when there was actually less than. They took more like 50% of their casualties. And we got a medal. What does that medal do anyway? And we got one career points and plus three to our reputation. I forget what reputation does. And it's not going to tell me. Well, anyway, so these were the battle rewards. And as you can see, First Corps General is uh, General Grant. Who is this? That's Wagner. We're going to replenish your supply of troops. Yes, sir. And that gets them to a full brigade strength, which is why I'd much rather than anything else. Um, let's see. Now here's the armory. And we could sell guns that we have in stock too. So we'll sell... We'll sell these because I want to phase those out 
as you can see, they also have pretty similar stats with this one being slightly better. Uh, for skirmishers. Oh, now that's good stuff. So yeah, you can... This game has a lot of versatility, and that's great. Snipers. Awesome. We can get snipers. That's awesome. Uh, Calvary. Let's see what they have for Calvary. Saw it off. Cooking Brother. We have the Sharps model, which is great for that, too. And Artillery. We got six pounders. How would you transport... Oh, I thought I said 100 pounder. We want to start going towards the parrots and the howitzers. Though they are better off with what we have right now, six pounders. Uh, let's look at the barracks. These are all in the academy, so I have to hire any of them. We're not going to hire anyone yet. And we're going to put this into army organization which army organization determines the maximum size of the army as well as increases uh you can have more corps divisions brigades to allocate to recruits and basically that's one core three divisions per core and four brigades per division and that's actually pretty good stuff to know too and the next level we get all of that. Yes, sir. So we're going to apply that. We have a little bit of money. Our reputation. The government is still skeptical of your leadership skills, but is willing to support you. You may ask for some extra resources if you desperately need them. But you risk decreasing your reputation to critically low levels. So if I ask for more money, I'd probably lose it. Now let's see the battle map. Correspondence. Captured May message. 806-1861. We have lost a battle to capture the train station. We are now in desperate need of more troops. Our forces are regrouping and our scouts have found... That the enemy is currently short on both manpower and ammunition. We will do our best to hold our current position and will counterattack the enemy as soon as possible, as we, as soon as we receive additional military support. Lieutenant Trump Pregram, or Truman Pregram. Sorry, I don't know why I said Trump. 10:06-1861. Captured message. After your engagement with the enemy to at the capture. At Capture the Train Station, President Jefferson Davis has approved to reinforce your army with 880,000 raw recruits. It took me a second to realize this is day, month, year, so this is within two days. Wow. 880,000. We don't have anywhere near that number. So that's the battle we first won. The stress call. Your newly formed army is needed urgently for the protection of our supply station near Manassas Railroad Junction. We are evacuating the region, which is very supportive of Confederates. Uh, so our supplies, arms, and ammunition must be secured. Upon victory, we get tons of stuff. Upon a draw, eh. And upon defeat, we just get more money than anything else. How about for... This one. The first battle of Bull Run. A grand battle. The Confederate Army, under the of PGT Beauregard has deployed south of the Bull Run River to guard Manassas Railroad Junction from the other side. 
Brigadier General Ivan McDowell is looking for a weak point to attack. Your forces will join McDowell and help him initiate an attack on the left flank of the Confederate Army. Now, for those of you who are not very familiar with the Civil War and think that it was fought literally between Grant and Lee, Ivan McDowell is the first leader of the Union Army and pretty much because of the massacre at Bull Run, loses leadership almost right away. Beauregard survives for a couple more battles, and I think he dies. I'm not going to say it because I, I know I'm probably wrong right here. I think he dies closer on the defense of Richmond, and that's where Lee takes over. Uh, I'm sure he either died or was wounded enough that we had to take over. Either way, it's very interesting that they allow you to fight in those, and then a distress call. We're going to try to add more troops first, though. We'll make it skirmishers. And we want to use the weapons we have the most of. And we'll equip them with that. And we'll make it 150 for right now. We don't have a ton of money. I say that and then I go, I want a little bit more than that. We'll make it 250 men. Actually, we, let's see how long, how long we can click this button until it starts paying. So at 86 men, we have an 86 more rifles, so we'll keep that 250 though. And we'll add a cavalry unit. The Sharps model variety. We'll make it 86 or 100. 100's pretty good too. And we'll create that. What else do we have in our armory? We have 65 more 1855s. I think for cavalry. And we have four more six pounders. So we are going to go for the 1855s. We'll add the four pounders right here. Can we not add it with six pounders? Oh no, because it's a 10 pound crew. Uh, yeah, let's create a, second, a separate division then. And we'll give them the six pounders. We'll add all four guns and we'll just pay them that. As for this, we will get the infantry in. We want them to have the 1855 models. Although I don't want them at 1,000 strength. I want them at more like 200, 500. 500 is reasonable. There, so now we have two divisions. And we can control that pretty easily. Uh... We're going to add another infantry unit. We don't have any more guns, do we? Springfield, 1865. Let's try that. So, infantry, Springfield, 1865. We don't want it for the entire army, we want it like 500.
Springfield, 1865, that's still 13,000. Hmm. So what we will do then is we will go to the distress call. And training is... So that's that. Our armory is 14 to 19%. Uh, I actually like this. So intelligence service. Here you find the enemy. You find enemy data gathered by espionage for the below categories. The total estimated size of the armies you oppose. Inflicting casualties reduces manpower, which affects the enemy strength in the next battle engagement. So that's good to know. The average experience of the enemy army. High numbers make it probable to confront well-trained or veteran troops. The armory itself. The average quality of enemy weapons. High numbers mean that enemy soldiers will have to access your weapons for latest technology. So that basically means the more they have of that, the better weapons they have and the newer they can be. So they could probably get like the 1863 Springfield, which is a rifled musket barrel and does not have the drawbacks of the 1861 with the screw, which could also pop off. I've seen it pop off actually several times. It is a horrible, horrible thing because it shoots out the side. Uh, and then reports which are intercepted. We are going to go for this to see if we can't get a victory out of it. New so our newly formed army was heading to Washington but received a distress call and must respond. The Union Supply Station near Manassas Railroad ju Junction urgently needs protection. The region is very supportive of the Confederacy. Our forces are evacuating the depot, but need more time to secure supplies, arms, and ammunition. The rebels are desperate to get their hands on more weapons and send troops to attack. The garrison is not enough to stop them. Your mission is to arrive on time and repel the attackers. So our army is one corps. One division, five brigades, and about 2,000 soldiers. For some reason, I think that it's not giving me why I actually asked. So sign required cores. So we'll put our core right there, dead center, I guess. And I think that's where we'll begin.